digital representation of data audio so we are going to take a look at audio today which obviously relates to sounds within an information system so audio is a data type and form of media which displays sound in an information system audio can be collected by microphones or created and manipulated using software data which needs to be recorded in order to create an audio file includes the sampling rate, which the number of times a sample or slice is taken from a sound wave, okay, and the most largest type of uh, sampling rate available is CD audio, which has about 44,100 uh, samples per second. That's a lot of samples per second, okay? And there's many other classifications within that, but the, at the lower end, we have AM radio, which is about 500 samples per second, okay? And if you've ever listened to AM radio, it's very rustic and, you know, a bit of grip behind it. Okay, it's nowhere near that quality, all right? So um, that is CD audio. We don't actually use CD audio as much anymore because we stream audio a lot through things such as YouTube, which we you're listening to right now and Spotify which does use compression related to mp3 okay which greatly reduce file sizes okay but I'm going a bit off tangent there but essentially there's a lot of sampling going on for high quality audio 44,100 at its highest Next, we need to get the sample size, which is similar to uh, the bit depth of an image, okay? But in this case, it relates to audio, and um, we say it relates to the bit resolution, the sampling size, which is the number of bits per sample. The most common sampling sizes are 8-bit and 16-bit sound. The more bits available, the more sounds there are available. So once again, more quality added to the audio there with the amount of sounds available to produce specific audio, okay, uh, from an audio file. And then finally is the time, the duration of the audio file. Obviously, the longer the time is in seconds, the greater the file is going to be. Okay, so audio is also one of those larger file sizes, okay, until you compress it. All right, and as I mentioned before, MP3 really popularized the compression of audio, which allows us now to stream audio and send audio out from online demand services. Okay, back in my day when I was younger, it was all CDs, we had to get the CD, and on that CD, it could only fit about 15 to 20 songs on it max. Okay, our devices now can hold thousands of songs, so that's that's pretty cool, all right, in relation to audio. So I'll try to illustrate this, okay, audio and information system from collecting to displaying, okay, and we'll see how it kind of works when we put audio into the system and essentially how we get it back out of the system. So audio can go into the system through a microphone, okay. Right now, I am entering audio into my system through a microphone, okay. My voice is going to the system. My voice is going in as a sound wave, okay. It is analog data that I am putting into my system. Okay, and computers don't read analog data. Okay, so something's got to be done about that. Now, you need to use essentially software, okay, to convert that analog data. Okay, and I'm using, for example, GarageBand, which is a popular music making application. What that software does is it takes the samples, okay, of the audio, and then at a set sample size, brings it into the system. Now, once we're bringing it into the system, we can't have analog anymore. So while those sampling sizes are being taken, okay, and we're setting the sample size, okay, it is now being converted into digital audio. It's zeros and ones now. It's no longer an analog waveform. Okay, we are converting it into digital data. Once audio has been digitized, it can then be played by a computer and obviously it is output by speakers, okay? Whether those speakers are attached to your headset, they're built into your actual monitor or you have them sitting separately or around your computer in some sort of surround sound system, okay? That is predominantly how audio is displayed by a system. So this is just a basic introduction to audio. Obviously, a lot of the things that have popped up here, they go into a lot more depth than what I've just mentioned here, but I hope this has given you a good basic understanding about data representation in relation to audio.